the day. Order Ballot item day. number 32, order M186, second reading of Bill 186, an act to establish the Poet Laureate of Ontario in memory of Gord Downey. Mr. Hatfield. The member from Windsor to come say. Speaker, I move second reading of Bill 186, an act to establish a Poet Laureate of Ontario in memory of Gord Downey. Mr. Hatfield has moved second reading of Bill 186, an act to establish Poet Laureate of Ontario in memory of Gord Downey. Pursuant to Standing Order 98, the members has 12 minutes for his presentation. Speaker, Gord Downey was a poet but was best known as a musician, singer, and frontman front for the Kingston Bass Band, The Tragically Hip. He had a rare form of brain cancer, but he didn't let it slow him down. The hip hit the road for a final cross-country tour last summer. It led to a summer of national bonding. It was almost as if we were invited in advance to Gord Downey's wake. Canadians celebrated with Gord and his bandmates, Rob Baker, Paul Langlois, Gord Sinclair, and Johnny Fay, a true band of brothers. They had played together since 1984 crisscrossed the country dozens of times and together won 16 Juno Awards. They created summer soundtracks for an entire generation. Gord Downey viewed Canada through a distinctive poetic lens and most of the poems involved in the songs, songs that fans across the country know by heart. He was ahead of his time. The band's first album had two songs about abused women seeking revenge. The CBC aired the HIP's final concert live. Nearly 12 million Canadians tuned in. Thanks to the CBC, it was seen around the world that night as well. The Globe and Mail said the concert galvanized the nation. I watched it, uh, much of it, from 35,000 feet while flying between Toronto and Calgary on my way to Yellowknife. Gord Downey died a couple of months after that concert, and here's what some media people said when he passed away. Vinay Menon wrote in the Toronto Star, stolen from us at the age of 53, Downey is leaving when we need him most. Who will write the songs across generations and slice across geography? Who will be our poet laureate and history professor, our spirit at raconteur and unflinching critic, our tour guide to the past and cultural voyager of the future? In Maclean's magazine, Michael Barclay wrote, Downey is considered by a lay audience as one of Canada's greatest poets, even if he only published one book of poetry, and his work is communicated primarily through a rock band. Josh O'Kane, writing in the Globe and Mail, said, through songs such as 50 Mission Cap and Ahead by a Century, Mr. Downey sung his poetry with both coos and howls, keeping his band or helping his band become kings of Canton. Yes, there was a ton of Canadian content in Gord Downey's poetry. At the suggestion of the member from Kingston and the Islands, we held a moment of silence here in the legislature when Gord Downey died. The Premier extended her condolences to his friends, families, and fans across the country, saying Gord lived every day of his life with grace and resilience. His music was a quintessential part of being Canadian. I know that there are millions, literally millions of Canadians who are in mourning today. I want to say that he'll be missed by all. My leader, the member from Hamilton Centre, speaking on behalf of New Democrats, extended our condolences, saying, he and his band, the tragically hip, are inspirational artists of Canada, and they gave us a goodbye and a long tour, and I think will always live in all of our hearts. Speaker, this bill is intended to keep alive the memory of Gord Downey. It's intended to recognize his contribution to Canadian literature. It's offered in a nonpartisan fashion, a symbolic way, to pay tribute to Gord Downey. McLean's magazine put out a commemorative issue devoted entirely to Gord Downey, his life and legacy. In there, Mar Michael Barclay writes, poetry and pop music are not strangers, of course. Just ask the committee who granted Bob Dylan the 2016 Nobel Prize for Literature. Lori Brown, a former host on CBC News World's On the Arts, once wrote, Gore doesn't consider himself one of the great poets of the nation, but he is. Speaker, Coke Machine Glow is the one book of poetry by Gore Downey. It was published in 2001. I'll read from his This Empty House. I'm writing on the back of the carbon monoxide detector, the last thing of ours to leave this empty house. Our stains on the wall stay. Our dusty lines and puke traces under where the crib used to be stay. The waste of a thousand true projections behind where our mirrors were stays. 
The smudges of our children's peregrinations around their beds looking for clearer, cooler needs and hospitable cracks stay on the walls I painted the last time this house was empty. Go down the stairs, lock the windows, pull the blinds, leave the main chandelier glowing and the hydro bill behind, slam the door, the knocker knocks, its first knock for other people. Speaker Ben Rayner is the pop music critic for the Toronto Star. He calls Gore Downey a vivid abstract poet. Gore Downey has been referred to as a notebook filling lyricist, always jotting down phrases and combinations of thoughts and words. I have to think when he was writing Coke Machine Glow, he went back to those lyrics and those notebooks. Here's his poem, Snowy Lambo. Words keep like canned peaches, if they're good enough. For instance, Snowy Lambo, that'll keep. And Tombe la Neige, slowly falling snow, that too. And Tigers on the Moon, uh-huh. So, Snowy Lambo, Tombe la Neige, Tigers on the Moon, after all these years. Speaker, the role of Poet Laureate would include writing poetry occasionally for use in the legislature, if called upon by the Speaker or the Lieutenant Governor. The role also includes visiting schools, presenting or arranging poetry readings, and assisting with writing workshops or other activities. Younger generations would learn to appreciate language and the creative way words can stir our emotions and stimulate our imaginations. The Poet Laureate would also advise the Legislative Library regarding its collections and acquisitions of books of poetry. I believe it's fitting we create the position of Ontario Poet Laureate in Gord Downey's memory. Canada has a Poet Laureate, as does Toronto, Windsor, Brantford, London, Mississauga, Sudbury, and other Ontario municipalities. Prince Edward Island has one, as does Saskatchewan. This isn't the first time that the position of Ontario Poet Laureate has been suggested in this house. My friend, the member from York Centre, Mr. Quinter, and I have suggested this previously. The difference on this occasion is the timing of the bill. Canada was energized during the Tragically Hip's final tour. As individuals, we paid more attention to Gord Downey's words and his poems, the Hip's award-winning songs, because we knew he didn't have much time left in this earth. We came to appreciate the value that poetry brings to our culture, our history, our stories. Poetry, for some, had been a forgotten pleasure. Speaker, there are many photographs of Gord Downey. In many of them, he's wearing a blue jean jacket with a yellow button on his right chest. It says, open books, open minds, open hearts. An Ontario Poet Laureate would do just that, Speaker. He or she would encourage people to open their minds to poetry, to read poetry, and to grow a true appreciation of the written word. As you know, over time, Gord Downey became an advocate for Indigenous issues. Perry Bellegarde is the National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations. He writes, as a man of words, Gord's lyrics and his poetry held up a mirror to Canada. He was driven to use his platform to make the country he loved a better place. His words were his activism. Speaker of the Assembly of First Nations paid tribute to Gord Downey. He was given a star blanket, an eagle feather, and a Lakota name, Wakapi Omani, the man who walks among the stars. That is so fitting, as in Coke Machine Glow, Gord had a poem called Star Painters. The myth is neither here nor there from the air, just blue lake stains on green and purified parceled squares, a crazy quilt of spearmint of mustard and honey tones, a scuffed up kitchen floor of tiles on top of bones with a big trap door. Towns down diagonal lines disappear and drop out of sight into the night beyond the national night and underneath the grit and glare into unfettered nothingness and thin air as herds of clouds lazily graze on thermal sighs of delight. The star painters are taking over now. Their scaffolding is in its place. You're an anesthetologist, or you know the word I'm trying to say, and tonight is washing up and on her way. Speaker Gore Downey was always writing he referred to it as his lifting the 400-pound feather. In that Maclean's tribute, the poet and editor Damien Rogers says, Gord is part of a continuum of great Canadian songwriters who are actually poets, 
Gordon Lightfoot, Leonard Cohen, Joni Mitchell. The greatest compliment you can give a poet is to say she's a rock star. The greatest compliment you can give a musician is to say he's a poet and Gord Downey is both. Damian Rogers went on to write, I can't think of anyone else of our generation who was so deeply engaged in this country's poetry, not just that he's read by poets, which he is, but also he reads them, and I can't overstate how unusual that is. Speaker Gore Downey was a humble genius. The Premier told me she fully supports this bill, as does the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport. I know the positive impact that Windsor's first poet laureate, Marty Gervais, has had on our community, and I believe we'll see similar results across Ontario. We need a poet laureate to speak on behalf of poets to be another spokesperson for the arts in Ontario, to remind us there's more to life than life in the fast lane. Canada's seventh parliamentary poet laureate was George Eliot Clark. He wrote an elegy for Gord Downey, and I'll just read the final four stanzas. He's too soon dead, who was a son, a husband, a brother, who knew Canadian with cinnamon glaze, donuts, dripping maple syrup, or to roam Winthrop Park, or strum a guitar as if affecting a slap shot, or find the exotic, quite at home, the group of seven Al Purdy's poems, curried poutine. He knew that Canadian meant anti-social poets enjoying long grass in their wintry sketches, stretches, pitching the mine's rocky mountains toward the sun. Yes, he knew that Canadian means bundling up with loved ones and not letting go. Speaker, we don't want to let Gord Downey go. Let's send this bill to committee and pass it into law, creating a poet laureate position in his honor to preserve his memory, I believe, is the right thing to do. I mentioned earlier we have uh, three visitors with us from the uh, Ontario Arts Council. Uh, Christian Thomas actually is the ex executive director of the Literary Press Group. Uh, Kirsten Gunter is the Director of Communications at the Ontario Arts Council and Shoshana Wasser, Communications Coordinator at the Ontario Arts Council. The OAC will have a role to play in the selection of the first Poet Laureate. I welcome them there this afternoon and thank you for your support.